Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about liqueur glasses and so you don't have, have an idea what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these little tiny, you know, tiny little and you drink liqueur out of them. So I thought, I'm not sure what book they would be in uh, when they started, etc. I mean, they do exist because there is one. And... Um, so I thought, okay, we'll go back to the beginning. So I pulled out some of my mighty tomes. Started with the um, 18th century drinking glasses uh, by Ellen Bickerton. No, went to the index, nothing. So I thought, go back forward in time. British glass, 1800 to 1914 by Charles Hadjimat. Nope, that's a no eat as well. And then I thought, okay, we'll do, maybe they're only 20th century. So I went, 20th century British glass, again by Charles Hadjimat. Nope, I thought maybe Charles Hadjimat had a blind spot. So I went to 20th century glass by Leslie Jackson. And I actually checked a few, several other books as well. And um, yeah, you can't find them in the index. Um, I suspect they're just, there may be some that exist somewhere in these books. Um, but yeah, I'm, 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 let me stop this a second because it's cutting off my circulation here. Yeah, now I'm relieved of the mighty tomes of, of book dom, of um, glass dom. Anyway, um, so yeah, they do exist. Quite a lot of people made them. Um, I have some uh, 18th, 19th century ones, and I have some 20th century ones I'm gonna show you. And um, so yeah, and so I, I had to cheat, uh, and I had to look in catalogs and things like that. So I'm gonna start out by showing you some catalogue references um, and then when I show you the glasses the ones that I do have catalogue references for I'll show you those too so yeah it, they're one of those little things that are on you know tableware is it, quite often very badly referenced and these are one of those things that are sort of like bubbling underneath everybody knows it exists you can go and buy them I think they still you can probably still buy them today um, um, but yeah, they're they're not they're not a specific collectible. Um, um, they're they're nice and handy if you have a little dinner party. You can pull your little tiny glasses out and all have a little snifter of something nice. I'm having some amaretto, and um, yeah. So I will get on and I'll show you a couple of references to start it, and then I'll show you some glasses. So this book's called uh, the Victorian Catalogue of Household Goods. Um, it says introductions by Dorothy Bosomsworth, I think. And um, yeah, so this is from 1883. Um, it's a catalog for uh, what are they called? Silver and Fleming. So, and if you look here, very small, you can see liqueur glasses. So yeah, they're the small ones. Actually, what's that one there? Oh, that's liqueur too. So yeah, the smallest ones are the liqueur ones. There's the smallest one on here. There it is and some probably slightly more expensive to the liqueurs down here yet so there's one there there's one there Go over the page and they have, have them here oh yeah there it is this tiny little one here this little jobby and there's another little jobby down there so there you go. That's that's what it's got in this book here. So this is from 1883. So they were definitely making them then, because they were selling them. So the book I'm looking at here is Edwardian Shopping by R. H. Landbridge, um, and it's supposed to cover catalogues from 1898 to 1913. So it's a bit later than the other one, and. Um, yeah, they're not, not giving you anything sp specific here. I think that's a Whitefriars. I think that's a Web. So it's not telling you that because this is um, the, these are being sold by the um, Army and Navy Cooperative. I think that one's um, John Walsh Walsh. But anyway, but yeah, it's Mitch and Manufacturers. But what you've got down here, so you, they're giving you an example of each of the glasses. But down here, you can see. They're selling liqueurs to go with them. Um, 
They're not selling them in dozens, they're only selling them in sixes, yeah. So anyway, there you go, and it's giving you the prices for them as you run along. So yeah, for each of these different standards of the patterns that they're showing you here, they're telling you um, that there's liqueurs to go with them. And there's no, there's no gaps any of this, so they've got liqueurs going for each of these um, patterns that they're showing you. So, yeah, so that's another example. So they're going on into the beginning of the 20th century. So this is the first um, mighty glass I'm going to show you. It's by Stevens and William. It's called from the Bart range from the 1880s. And yeah, when I get my hands in, you see that actually, you know, it's tiny. It's a thimble, really. Maybe two thimbles. But anyway, it's tiny. It's very delicate. Nicely cut. Um, lovely morning star cut base. So, yeah, that's a really nice little one. This is the earliest one that I have. Um, that's of this kind. And, um, yeah, so I've got a reference for this, so I'll show you that now. So this book is The, the Decanter Ancient to Modern by Andy McConnell. And, and if you remember when I reviewed this book, I said you can use it to identify other, other objects, not just decanters. And you see this decanter here with this pattern on it. Yeah. It's this pattern here. Can you see that? And um, yeah, I have other parts from this service as well. So um, I have a job with this and it has this exactly same base. So, and yeah, and here it is. So called bar pan decanter seven three one. So eighteen eighty is the date we've got for that liqueur glass. So I have two very different um, white fries glasses here. Uh, this is pattern, I think it's one one four seven by Harry Powell. And it's a little hexagonal cutting. You can see it's actually probably, you know, not wholly unrelated to the last one we were looking at and um, yeah uh, I think this is from like 1898 or something like that I think and um, yeah and this one I'm not sure who designed this one this is an M80 from the 1940s um, yeah and again you can see they're both tiny um, so yeah White Fries was doing them and um, yeah, we'll move on. I'll show you uh, references for those. Currently looking at the uh, whitefries.com, whitefriesglass.com website. And um, yeah, so this is the M80 pattern. There's the tiny little glasses we were looking at. Um, just above, they've actually got the, um, the, oh God, 2481 pattern. And um, yeah, they've got liqueurs for that. And they're telling you here, it's a liqueur. There you go. They're not actually telling you what they are here, but that's clearly the tiniest one, and it's a liqueur. The book I'm looking at here is White Fries of the Art of James Powell by Leslie Jackson. And uh, yeah, so this is the service we're looking at. It's actually, compared to some of the other services that we're going to see here, this is not that big. I don't know if this is supposed to be the full service. I think the glass we're looking at is this little tiny one here on the end. Um, that looks like it probably is a liqueur one because you look at the contents of that one compared to that one it's absolutely minuscule you probably get about 10 of those into there um, and yeah Harry Powell I think I got that date wrong 1894 anyway so um, there you go here it is in the book so I've got two here um, these are by Thomas Webb, different periods. This is an Edwardian design. Um, this is a 1930s design. Um, this one's actually marked. Um, it says, Webb made in England, with made in England written around in a circle around the word Webb. And then, um, yeah, this one's not marked because I think it precedes their marking. Um, and it's in the fur comb pattern. This is old English pattern. Um, I'm not sure I've got references for, 
these um, have the pattern and and I have I don't think I've got one for the liqueurs um, so yeah I'm not sure if I'm gonna show you anything so unexpectedly I found something um, so this is British Glass Between the Wars by Roger Doddsworth and uh, yeah we have this little Old English um, bullseye glass and uh, it's got a number on it it's and it's this one here dun, dun, dun. Old English bullseye with marked made made in England a web made in England um, so if I flick over a couple of pages you can see that mark here 1935 to 49 so yeah that was um really unexpected so this one is um Webb Corbett one from the 1930s um I don't have a reference for this um it is marked can you see there it did come with a decanter and the decanter is the same shape as the other 1930s it might be post-war because I think they were making some post-war ones in this shape as well. So I think the shape originally originally before the war. Um, it's very nice. It's got a little cutting on there. And the decanter that goes with this is tiny as well. You know, it's about half a pint. Um, little triangular, a conical one. So, yeah, so that's that. Uh, so it's marked, so there you go. I'm looking at um, British Glass Between the Wars by Roger Dodsworth. And the Webb Corbett mark we saw here is this one here, Webb Corbett, made in England, and it's um, 1930 to 47. So, yeah, I don't have any tighter reference than that. So this one is a Stuart Crystal one, um, designed by, the pattern's called Woodchester, designed by Ludwig Knein in the 1930s. Is it marked? Not all of them marked. I think, yes, yes, it's just faintly marked. There, if I can get the focus, there you go. Stuart England. I think this is a post-war one because it doesn't have the spots. I can, um, in fact, I will pull out the catalogue because I can show you a few pages where they've got other, you know, where all of the different designs had um, liqueurs to go with them. So um, yeah, uh, and this was actually in the in the other video for Woodchester. I'm looking at a Stuart Crystal uh, catalogue. I think it's from the 70s. You can see this little. This is a Woodchester pattern. It's this little tiny glass here. I think this is a liqueur. I'll show you something on the other page in a second. But before we go, so here's a bunch of other patterns here. And if you look here, there's a liqueur. There's a liqueur. There's a liqueur. Um, and if I go over the page. Um, you can see, is that Woodchester? Yep, Woodchester. There's a liqueur. Uh, the one underneath, which is a lesser range, they've got a liqueur, and this one's got a liqueur, Westbury. So, I have actually checked through the whole catalogue, and every pattern, even if it's a shorter range, has um, a liqueur. So, um, sticking with the 30s here. So these are Stromberg's Heisen one. I have a reference for this one and I can show you it in the catalogue. I don't for this one. Um, this one's a bit more awkward in that it came with a Stromberg's Heisen decanter, um, which has the same ribbing. It had a black stopper, uh, whereas this one has a black foot. I, I think it's with it. Um, yeah, it's very awkward. I, I think it's Stromberg's Heisen. Um, and this is the one I was drinking out earlier, and you can see how small these glasses are there. I mean, that, that how that survived with that being so thin there. Um, yeah. So there you go for, for those ones. So I have here um, a copy of the Journal of the Glass Association, Volume 8, 2008. And, um, yeah, these were the, the little tiny glass that we were looking at. This is it. And um, you can see here. They do the cures, and um, yeah, it's 11 shillings for, for a dozen, I think. Um, you can see, if you look at the other shapes they do, they do the cures for those as well. As you work your way around, 
they're doing liqueurs for everything. Um, although, oh yeah, they do. There you go. So you can see. So they do. No, those are those are tumblers, so those don't count. So anyway, uh, you get the idea that most most companies that were making tableware were doing liqueurs with the patterns that they were selling. I've been on my um, journey of discovery, um, ploughed through dozens of books. Um, I can't tell you when they started making liqueur glasses. They probably stopped making them, well, as we as we see them today, as part of the big service, as, as the English glass houses died out. Um, uh, we do know little glasses like this are liqueurs, because the catalogues tell us so. Um, you would probably have to do some you know, go to one of the museums and go through piles of catalogues and um, try and pick out dates for when things came in, went out, etc. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, it's interesting. Tableware is such a hazy area sometimes. Some things are very collected things, so everybody knows what they are. But as soon as you look at something as a broader subject, it just, like, it all gets a bit mushy. There's nothing that specifically picks them out in the book, and etc., etc., so, so yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, it is a class of glass that nobody uses. I think they're quite nice. I occasionally use one, <laughs> just to have a little, just like I did just now with my amaretto. I did drink of my discovery just to see how that would go. Um, but anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I will put uh, the descriptions of all the books in the down below, as well as the link that I used. And anything else? Nope, I think that's it. So uh, thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Good night.